the personal computer, a device developed in the late half of the 20th century, which today is owned by billions of people worldwide. The PC is one of the most versatile tools ever invented, and it can be used for many tasks ranging from productivity to video gaming. With modern advancements in technology, the PC is becoming more powerful, more affordable, and more customizable. Today, we're going to take you into the world of custom computer building, where people design, build, and use their very own computers to do exactly what they need. Hello, and welcome to our documentary on custom computers. Now, many of you have never seen a custom computer, let alone know what goes into one. So we'll start there. Most of you know what this is, a computer case, but not what's inside of it. Inside, you have many different parts, including the processor, or CPU, which serves as the brain of the computer, the RAM, which serves as a quick memory unit which the CPU runs programs on. Another key component, especially for a gamer, is a graphics card, or the GPU, which is essentially a completely separate computer that has the sole purpose of rendering graphics. There are also hard drives, disk drives, and a power supply. But there's one piece that links all of these parts together, the motherboard. Every single connection in a computer somehow passes through the motherboard, and it serves as a big data highway for the computer. Let's talk to our expert, Dr. Steven Sartori, about what a computer is. Actually building a computer isn't that difficult. Um, you certainly want to research, find out what your application, what your needs are, and then purchase parts. Once you purchase parts, typically you start with the case, um, put in the power supply, uh, add in the motherboard, then go ahead for your memory and any of those other things, hard drives, optical drives, um, all that kind of stuff. My computer servicing students, um, they can put together a computer um, in less than a, one class period. So 50, 60 minutes, they can put it together. I think hands-on people really like to do that. People that are wanting something special out of a computer. Um, you know, building a, your own computer is, is a lot of fun if you like that kind of activity. If you don't like that kind of activity, it can be tedious, and I would just suggest buying an already built, you know, setup. There's what we call an open architecture, which means you can build anything you want. Typically, you're going to really customize a PC if you want it to be extra fast. Um, extra fast video, so like video games or rendering for uh, say weather maps, things like that, that take a lot of video, take a lot of memory, those kind of things. You have to research it, figure out what you need. Not all parts are compatible with each other, so you have to figure that out. Um, and then you got to build it. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't work, then you need to troubleshoot it. So it's, it's a lot like any other project. Um, it's just you know, smaller and condensed than if you're building a car or <laughs> something like that. It is self-satisfying. You know, a lot of people just, they do it because they enjoy it. You know, it's a lot of fun to shop for those parts and, and sometimes that's even more fun than the actual building. You know, doing the research and deciding what you want and looking for this and that, then trying to find the best price and then ordering it all in. Um, that's actually a lot of fun sometimes. And then, you know, putting it all together, it is self-satisfying. Once you, you know, hit the start button and that operating system loads and it's ready to go, um, that's, that can be a lot of fun. Dr. Sartori does have a point. It's easy to customize a PC, and if you're looking for something that does not require as much work, you might want to buy one pre-made, although the experience of building your very own computer is much more fulfilling. Custom computers can be split into three individual tiers, low-end, mid-range, and high-end. Each tier is separated by price and performance, with the low-ends costing around $600, while the high-ends can go for many thousands of dollars. With myself representing the high-end spectrum, I talked to a couple of other students who represent low-end and mid-range computers. So I went with low-end because at the, at the time I was like really like, I didn't have a steady income or like any money at all. So I just waited a little bit, got some money from my parents, got some money from my grandparents, and I just saved up and I was like, all right, I think this is good enough. I'll get what I can and upgrade from there. I, on my PC, I spent around $600. I didn't really have a lot of money at the time, and I really just wanted a PC, so instead of just going out and buying like a decent laptop, I tried and built like a pretty good PC. I primarily use my PC for gaming on Steam, which I play CSGO. When I'm not doing that, I am doing schoolwork or using YouTube. Without discounts, I would have spent about $2,000 and about $1,500 was the tower. Well, primarily I use my PC for video editing and other media productions such as photo editing and graphics. 
Right now, I've rebuilt the computer a couple of times for minor upgrades, and total on that, I've spent a little over $2,000 just on the tower, and then everything else you see behind me adds up to a grand total of around $3,000. I prefer my PC because I can do a lot of stuff with it, not just for gaming or schoolwork, I could also just go on the internet and browse the web. I came from a laptop, so when I actually turned it on and the visual quality was amazing, it was more, I don't know if it was an accomplishment, but I was just amazed that it actually worked and how good it looked. When we first booted it up, it was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. But then it like just completely shut down and we didn't know what was happening. Like it just, we couldn't figure it out. We were thinking maybe like uh, like something fried or something. I, I didn't know what it was, like I didn't know what to do. Like that was my first ever PC. So I was trusting my brother and like everything that was going on. So when he said, I don't know what to do, I was like, oh, I don't know what to do either. And then I finally had like an expert come in who was like, oh, yeah, you just, you didn't really plug that in right. So we fixed it and we switched it on and next thing you know, I was gaming on my PC. When I did first turn my PC on, it, I really did feel a big sense of accomplishment because, you know, I came from a family where pretty much everyone was like way back in the terms of technology. So before this, I had a, like a computer from the 90s. You know, my whole family just didn't really get that much into technology. So when I you know, decided to spend all this money on uh, a higher quality machine that I would then, you know, take myself into the 21st century finally, uh, I really felt a, a big sense of accomplishment when that happened. I got into gaming around March of 2014 when one of my friends said that he highly recommended playing and he wasn't going to play with me on Xbox anymore because he got rid of his, so I decided to get a computer and then we played together. I played consoles a lot. I grew up on consoles, but my brother started playing on PCs a lot more and he's, he built his own PC for around $900. And I was like, oh, that this runs really good, Pat. Can I get one for like cheaper than this? And he said, yeah, I'll help you build it. So I got it and I started playing on it. And at first, I, you know, it was hard for me. I, I didn't really feel comfortable because I was used to a controller. But um, after time, I just, fell into it. I try to make media and edit videos and stuff like that whenever I get a chance. So maybe on a weekend I'll write a script for a video and you know throw it together with a couple of friends of mine and you know I'll spend average of around four to five hours just editing on you know a 10 minute video. So it's it gets to be a lot of hours totaled up that I spend using this computer and you know that's why I decided to spend so much money and so much time on it. I have a group of friends that I play with every night from about 8 to 10. From all of my gaming, I probably have a little bit more than 3,000 hours in total playing all, all video games. Based on the ranking of what Valve has set, that's, they are the creators of Counter-Strike, they say my ranking is the top 1%. Competitive gaming I do because it's very fun. For the most tournaments that we play in, they are like a normal tournament for any sport. There's half of them are like single elimination, then the other ones there's double elimination, there's a lower and upper bracket, just like for most sports. First, second, and third place always get money. Typically, we range from first to 32nd. Well, I think that editing for me could be a potential career opportunity, and it also just allows me to kind of express myself in a way that I am not able to do in my daily life. It allows me to kind of alter reality and create you know new versions of myself or other people that I know and you know acting and you know, putting a story together just it allows me to really you know find a, a better meaning to some things and it's it's just something that I like to do with my time a lot it's fun the benefits of being of playing all these games would be to in the long run become a professional at it and use it as a job pros of the game that I want to play, CSGO, make six figures a year, and that's good money just for playing a game that you love. I think the PC really is the ultimate device for anyone because it, it can do so much more than any other device out there. It's a lot more powerful than a cell phone or a laptop or anything like that, and it's, it's much more versatile than maybe a console because 
I mean, you can game on it just as well as a console, even quite a bit better than a console usually. And But you can also do homework and you can just do pretty much everything you would ever need to with a computer when a lot of other you know, devices are limited in their capabilities. And that's why the computer is just so much better of an option than a lot of other devices out there right now. And the customization doesn't end there. There are so many more things that you can do with a custom computer that we didn't show you or mention. It's up to you to explore what you want and build the PC to your specifications and likings. The task at hand may seem tedious at first, but the benefits of having a custom computer are truly limitless. Custom computers are not as much of a hobby and more of a lifestyle. Thousands, if not millions of people worldwide share a deep bond for the love of computer building, and hopefully now you can appreciate them more as well. If you ever have the opportunity to build a computer, take it because I can assure you that you won't regret it. So get building.